Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us as we have breaking news coming out of Hawaii, as the headquarters of the United States Pacific Fleet at Pearl Harbor has been severely damaged in what looks to be a catastrophic display of negligence by the Roosevelt administration. Joining us now is senior political analyst Jack Doyle here at FNN to break down the situation. Jack, thank you for being here. Can you tell us what's going on? The president keeps calling it a Japanese attack. Do you think that this is sending the wrong message? Thanks for having me, John. Yeah, I'd be glad to do that. I think that you may have misspoke when describing the event. And no, I don't think that the president is sending the wrong message at all, because what's happened is a Japanese attack on the United States Naval Base at Pearl Harbor. I'm sorry, and what the, I have to interrupt for a second. Let's try not to point fingers as to who's responsible for this before we have all of the facts. What? Well, you just claimed that it was a Japanese attack. Right, that's completely factual. Well, we try to avoid using alternative facts here at FNN, and my producers are actually telling me that this attack just came from Japan, but that doesn't mean that we can just declare it as a Japanese attack. That's actually exactly what that means. Well, you know, we just want to try to avoid scapegoating anyone in particular right now as the story is unfolding and we're still sorting out the details, but can you comment on the blood that President Roosevelt has on his hands since he failed to protect us from this incident? I don't think that the president has failed at all. I think that his response to this has been swift and it's been effective. I mean, the president has lifted the American morale. He's called for a suspension of naturalization proceedings for Japanese immigrants. So for Jack, why do you, we think it's okay to suspend Japanese immigration as a result of this incident? Do you have a problem with people that come from other countries? Of course not. But the idea would basically be that this crisis poses a risk to our national security. And since we have to protect the American people, we should suspend all immigration from the place in the world that caused this crisis. Again, yeah, which is in the Japanese didn't cause this crisis. There's a difference between causing something and acting in ways that directly result in something. Literally, there is not. Jack, you seem to be very focused on what the Japanese people have done. But do you care to comment on the actions of the Roosevelt administration that led to this? Do you care to comment on the embargoes, for example? Yeah, I'd be happy to. I mean, the Japs have been looking Whoa, to strengthen- easy. What's the problem? Uh, let's try to avoid using racial slurs on national television, okay? How is that a racial slur? There is no such thing as the Japanese race. Well, it's still offensive. Maybe so, but it's also efficient. And thousands of American lives were just lost, but you wanna waste time with me in a semantics battle over what words I'm using or how I'm labeling this crisis? Where are your priorities at? The embargo exists in response to aggression from Imperial Japan throughout Southeast Asia, particularly within the French colonies of Indochina. And so that's a mighty word of, salad there, my friend. A word, what does that even mean? Well. You seem like you're trying to avoid addressing the uncomfortable truth, which is that President Roosevelt designed these embargoes to target the Japanese people. D did that need to be said? Like, I just explained to you the actions that were taken by the Japanese, which are the reasons for the embargo. Jack, and you're trying to make it- You're missing the point. No, you're twisting my no, words. I'm, Jack, I'm not doing that. Yes or no? President Roosevelt designed the embargoes to target the Japanese people. How is that? Like, are you asking me if Japanese people live in Japan? What kind Jack, of- Yes or no? Sure, so we agree. I don't think so. So then you hate the Japanese people? I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the Japanese people. I think that they're great people, but their government is terrible. Imperial Japan has overseen some of the greatest human rights violations in the history of the world, frankly. Actually, and excuse me. Actually, they've done a great job. In fact, they've helped us to hold our own leadership accountable, our own leadership that placed unnecessary embargoes on them through an act of racism and xenophobia. And I think that the rhetoric that we've heard from the president and from yourself is harmful. And I think that it has the potential to cause a lot of anti-Japanese sentiment in the country because- Our rhetoric, Will. Yes. Not the attack, just our rhetoric, right? Jack, again, you're missing the point. People need to stop blaming others. They should just stay calm and just stay inside until all this blows over. What do you mean we shouldn't blame others for this? Like, should, shouldn't someone be held accountable for this? Shouldn't the country responsible be held accountable? And what do you mean people should just stay inside? Don't you know that they have jobs to do? How are they supposed to provide for their families? See, How this is what I'm talking about. Everyone is saying, oh, well, I want this. Oh, and I want that. No one is talking about what the country wants. And by the country, of course, I mean Japan. And that's selfish thinking. Japan wants to kill everyone, John. Well, then that's their prerogative. And you should be more open-minded. How are you employed? Jack, it's clear to me that you and I are not exactly on the same page here, so why don't we bring in our next guest to help uh, clear things up a little bit, Imperial Japanese Officer and Chief Tokyo City Correspondent Fukuyo Amatika. Thank you for joining us. Are you kidding me? Thank you for having me, John. I'm very excited to be here. Well, believe me, the pleasure is all ours, officer. Now, I do have to apologize for some of the rhetoric that you had to endure earlier for Mr. Doyle, which I'm sure that you found to be extremely offensive. Oh, no, not really. So, can you clear up what happened? for us today. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about how it wasn't your fault and so you shouldn't have to take responsibility for it? 
Well, simply put, we are the superior people on this earth, which means that it's our job to rule over the rest of mankind, and so we're looking to continue our conquest throughout Asia. The United States decided to enact an oil embargo, and we've since re-strategized to get our oil from the East Indies. The problem being that while the Dutch and British aren't explicitly allied with the Americans, they're fairly amicable with each other. And since America occupies territories that are beside our supply lines, such as the Philippines and Guam, Yeah, that's classic America, right? Always taking land from native populations. Right, so given the geographic implications of hey, the American- everyone's illegal on stolen land, am I right? Do you mind if- okay, thank you. So, given the geographic implications of the American military bases and controlled territories, we really couldn't risk losing everything that we've been fighting for as a result of an American decision to enter the war, so we elected to cripple the ability of the Americans to mobilize against Imperial Japanese interests. So, basically what you're saying is that America was unfairly targeting you, we were singling you out, because you're different, because maybe you look a little bit different than we do, maybe because you invade a little bit different than we do. Is that what you're telling us? Uh, I guess you could say that. I think that's sort of missing the point. I think really, it Can comes I chime down in for a second? Why is it that we're so concerned about people's feelings right now? What happened was an act of war against the United States of America, and it should be met with a proportionate response. And that's okay, exactly- Jack, so let me get this straight. You're talking about going to war now because of Japan, but while Hitler's been acting in Europe for years, you've been preaching a policy of neutrality. So why is it that you're backtracking on that when it comes to Japan? Are you in support of what Hitler is doing? What? No, Hitler is allied with Imperial Japan. Imperial Japan attacked us. Like, I don't even understand how that makes sense. You're literally promoting the agenda of our enemy. I don't know why you- Mr. Do Jack, I'd like to continue, please. So, uh, Officer Amalika, I understand that you were led to believe by intelligence that all three American aircraft carriers were going to be docked this morning, but upon your arrival, they were not there because they were out at sea. So, how does this misinformation from the United States affect your ability to operate effectively? Oh my God. That's correct, John. And it really was discouraging, but thankfully, we were Are you able seriously to do doing this right now? Mr. Doyle, Fukuyo Amalika didn't interrupt when you were speaking, so could you please extend him the same respect? It's true, I didn't. What is the matter with you? You have the audacity to attack us while we're sleeping and then purport yourself to be this quintessential figure for common decency? And you, John, why on God's green earth would you allow him on the network when you know that he shouldn't be here? Are you serious? Why is it that you don't think he should be here, Jack? You know exactly what I mean. Earlier this morning, these people deliberately attacked- What do you mean by these people, Jack? Are you serious right now? Look at him, he's learning. Mr. Lemon, I think he's doing that thing that you mentioned earlier again. Oh my, Officer Malika, is he offending you right now? Yes, that's it, he's offending me right now. Oh, no, help, I'm so offended. Help America. Jack, we're gonna have to excuse you from this segment since you clearly cannot contain your prejudice. Oh, God forbid. John, I am so sorry for offending you. In the meantime, why don't you ask the officer here about the hundreds of thousands of people that were slaughtered in Nanking by his country? Why don't you ask him about their use of chemical weapons or about the human experimentation? You've awoken a sleeping giant and I hope that you, oh, looks like his feed cut out. Must have been a bad signal. Well, that's what happens when you have that much hatred in your heart. It blinds you from seeing the truth, so. Officer Malika, I apologize on behalf of my country for the discrimination that your people have faced and will continue to face from those in my country who are bigoted. And again, thank you so much for joining us and I hope to see you again soon. Oh, I think I'll be seeing America again very soon. Well, that about wraps it up for us. So thank you for tuning in to the most trusted source in news. And remember, the enemy of the people is not the press and it's not the actual enemy of the people. The real enemy of the people is the person who tries to point out who is an enemy because by doing that, that person is marginalizing others, which is offensive and intolerant. So we can't have any tolerance for that. So good night, everyone. And remember, for 10,000 years,